The results of the referendums on the legalisation of abortion and so-called marriage equality are being widely hailed as proof that Ireland has changed, changed utterly. There has been an orgy of rejoicing, celebration and unrestrained gloating for many quarters at the emergence of the new, modern, secular, progressive Ireland as it's being portrayed. At the same time, no opportunity is being wasted to put the boot in on the Catholic Church, social and political conservatives, and indeed anyone who is not 100% in favour of the liberal left progressive agenda. The so-called liberal, liberal left obviously feel that the outcome of the two referendums entitled them to display astonishing levels of bitterness and viciousness towards anyone who dares to oppose them. But that should not come as a surprise, as bitterness and viciousness are exactly the characteristics one should expect to find in promoters of abortion. What lies ahead then in this bleak scenario for the one-third of voters who voted no in the referendums? What lies ahead for nationalists, Catholics and other Christians and people in general who hold traditional or conservative views on most matters? Well, there is no doubt that our opponents are in the ascendancy at the moment. Equally, there is no doubt that huge number, numbers of Irish people have become infected by a malaise of sorts that causes them to choose wrong over right, perversion over wholesomeness, destruction over progress and death before life. Some people on the nationalist pro-life side may inevitably feel a temptation to give up, throw in the towel and admit that the cause is hopeless. But when taking a number of facts into account, I certainly do not believe that that is the case. Firstly, there is the fact that one third of those who voted in both referendums voted no. They were a minority, of course, but a substantial and significant minority. If the support of those no voters can be effectively mobilised, that support can be used in, to turn the tables and restore a decent, moral, patriotic outlook to the majority of the population. This is by no means impossible, as a great many people are sufficiently pliable as to be influenced by a well-presented campaign that favours either the positive or the negative. This was demonstrated in the abortion referendum by the large numbers of undecided voters virtually up to referendum day. These people were finally persuaded to vote yes only by the massive, overwhelming campaign waged by all the long-established political parties, the media, trade unions, show business personalities, etc. The campaign for a yes vote in both referendums was so massive, relentless and intense that I think it is true to say that a great many people who voted yes were virtually browbeaten and intimidated into doing so. I believe that many of those yes voters who were undecided up to the last moment could without too much difficulty be won back. After all, most people are decent and well-intentioned. There is another excellent reason why our cause cannot be abandoned, and it is this. Down through the years, and indeed through the centuries, many thousands of great, patriotic, heroic Irish men and women have made many sacrifices, including the ultimate sacrifice, to make Ireland a proud, free, independent nation where decency, moral standards, national pride and life itself are revered and held sacred at all times. Today's nationalists simply cannot give up and forget the endless sacrifices and heroism of our patriot dead. We cannot yield to the forces of negative, destructive globalism, internationalism and treason. Attracting support from young people is essential to the advancement of any cause, and the fact that the National Party has attracted so many young members is hugely encouraging. The fact that young people have flocked to the National Party, despite having come through an education system that opposes and demonises practically everything that the National Party stands for, shows that our members can think for themselves and see through the biased propaganda and falsehoods of the political and educational establishment. But there is one reason... But there is one reason for optimism, optimism above all others, and it is this. 
we have right, we have truth, we have honour and we have justice on our side. We are the inheritors of a great and noble tradition of patriotism and nationalism. We are the true Irish. We must prevail. Ariesh Arai.